Welcome to the Poplar Assembly of God, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Good morning. Time to walk on the water this morning.
Matthew 14, 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto, unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the, into the ship and the wind ceased, they, they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Aren't you glad we serve the Son of the living God here today? Aren't you glad we serve a God that is with us in those times and in these storms? So here we have the story of Peter, and, and it's always talked, and, and uh, we, we talk about the story of Peter walking on the water, and that's what we're going to share, we're going to emphasize here today. It, so it says in the fourth hour night, Jesus went onto them walking on the sea. So whatever it is that we're going through in our life, that, that it, is, it seems like it's about to overtake us. Sometimes it seems like all these things that are surrounding us 
are pushing us down and try to steal our victory, trying to steal our joy, trying to discourage us and push us down and make us feel like failures or feel like nothing. All these things are trying to push us down. Jesus is walking on top of those things. They are not above him, but they are beneath him in his feet. And I believe that God wants you to put those things under your feet today. Don't let them push you down anymore, but rather stand up and begin walking. Put it under your feet in Jesus' name. How many glad we have the power and that authority in Jesus' name? Look at your neighbor and say, put it under your feet in Jesus' name. Now look at your feet. <laughs> Oh, you know, I remember one message, one, one, uh, I think it was a youth rally that, that uh, they, they gave us, uh, that they gave all the kids markers and, and they, they, he told them to take, take off their shoes and whatever it was that, that they were battling, whatever it was that was trying to bring them down, whatever sin or attack on their lives that was trying to bring them down, write it on the bottom of your shoe. Because he said, the Lord wants you to put it under your feet. How many know, whatever it is here today, I want to encourage you. Don't let it overtake you, but uh, take over it and put it under your feet and begin walking on. So that's when, when it says Jesus was walking on the sea. And we're going to see later that this was a discouraging thing of him. So walking on the sea. And it said, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, is it a spirit? They got all freaked out and all looking at, oh, what is it? How many ever saw something you didn't know what it was? How many ever saw something in the distance, kind of cloudy, you couldn't see what it is, you didn't know what it was? Could have been Sasquatch. Could have been Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Someone took a picture. I, I think uh, Alina took a picture of us walking from the bus. We were walking. Joanne and I were walking across the street, and she took a picture of us walking across the street, and it took it through the bus window, so it was kind of cloudy. She showed it to me. I said, oh, Bigfoot and his wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so sometimes we, we see things, and we don't really know what they are, and that, that brings fear. And I often share the story of, uh, of, of, of my brother, you know, uh, after, after Rocky had passed away and I missed him so much. And, and uh, we were in, in our house on C Street, and uh, on, on A Street. And, and uh, I came into the, uh, uh, from the bedroom, went into the, I was on my way to the kitchen in the middle of the night. That's the first step. Don't go to the kitchen in the middle of the night. And, and I, went, I went across and I looked and saw by the window and I thought, I thought I saw my brother sitting in the, in the chair there. Saw him sitting there with his, with his feet crossed, with his foot uh, crossed on his, like he, he did that a lot. He sat there and, uh, and wearing a hat. Sometimes he would wear a hat, you know. And I thought, I stopped. Looked around. You know that feeling that you get? How many ever got that feeling? Ooh. And I looked and I thought, started getting kind of scared. And, you know, that fear tries to creep in. So I, I went, I continued on to the fridge. <laughs> Opened the fridge. And it's, it's crazy that, that everything always happens at a certain time like this. So I went to the fridge and opened it and the fridge went. <laughs> Make matters worse. <gasps> and so, so I went back over there and I, I, I was feeling around for the light. I flicked on the light, flipped on the light. And here on, that, on the, uh, the recliner was left up like that. And there was a blanket wrapped over. So that's what it looked like his foot. And the lamp was there. And that's what it looked like a hat. <laughs> oh, and I started laughing and laughing. And Joanne said, what's going on? I, said, oh. I thought I saw my brother by there, but it wasn't. It was a blanket and a, and a lamp. So, but sometimes we see things and, and it plays tricks on you. And sometimes the enemy will do that. He, he'll try to, he'll try to uh, uh, see, uh, uh, see things and bring about fear. When we see things, it, it, it creates a fear. So they were troubled and they were saying, is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. What, you know, here they were in a ship and they saw this walk. So they cried out for fear. What does that cry of fear sound like? Ah! 
At the count of three, everybody scream in fear. One, two, three. <laughs> Brother Allen scared me right there. But that's what happens, you know, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, uh, one of the young people shared a, a message about, uh, uh, about uh, roller coasters in life, the roller coasters of life. And, and uh, I sent Alina some of my, my ideas about the roller coaster because, uh, you know, we always talk, I always talk about the roller, my experience with a giant roller coaster and, and how the, that sound when it's ticking, taking you up, it's going click, 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 and it goes up there. And then all of a sudden the clicking stops. And it's that time <laughs> that the clicking stops, and then there's that gap before you go straight down. How many have ever been on those roller coasters? How many will never go on another one again? <laughs> uh, I remember getting off that one, and we, were, we came back, and people were standing on the side. I said, don't go, don't go. <laughs> there's one lady turned around and left. But it's, a, it's that sound because it's that, it's that fear, it's that in anticipation of, of, of what's going to happen. But, you know, on the other hand, instead of anticipating the fear, how many know we should be anticipating what God is about to do in this situation? How many know we, are, we should be shouting because of what he is going to do? I believe that God is going to do something powerful. I believe that God is going to do something mighty in our midst. And it's time to begin shouting in advance. Shouting in advance for what he's about to do. Come on, somebody give him a shout here today. Because he's going to do something mighty. He's going to do something powerful. He's going to do something miraculous because he's a God of the impossible. He's a God of the miraculous. He's a God that knows what you're going through. He's a God that knows what you need and he's about to bring it to pass in your life. Somebody shout, I receive it in Jesus name. So here we have the, the, the disciples in this ship crying out for fear instead of, oh if that's him, awesome, Lord you're here. Instead, They were crying out for fear. So we choose. So it says, but straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. He's saying, cheer up. You know, and that's what uh, he's, he's telling them to rejoice. Here they were crying out in fear, but he told them to rejoice and be of good cheer because it's me. It's me. I'm here. So when the enemy comes in like a flood in your life and trying to push you down and cause you to fear in your life, Jesus is saying, don't be afraid because it is I. I am here. I am right by your side. I am going to bring you through. How many glad we serve a God that is right beside us? How many glad he's going to take us by the hand and lead us through? Whatever it is that we're going through, he is going to bring us through. Say it with me. He's going to bring me through. And the only way that we can get through something is what? Is to keep on going. That's the only way we're going to get through it. And then when we get through it, it will be in the past. It will be behind us and it will be a testimony. Some of you are right in the middle of something right now, but God is going to turn it into a testimony. You might think it's something that's trying to drag you down or trying to destroy you, but God is going to turn it around and he's going to, you're going to look back and it's going to be a testimony to someone else. And you're going to realize you're going to be able to lift up the Lord in that situation and realize and encourage someone else because what God has done for me, he can do for you. How many know we serve a God that is going to bring us through. We serve a God of the, of the miracles and he's going to, so keep on going. Look at your neighbor and say, keep on going. Amen. So we keep on going. That's how we get through something because if we stop and we just let have, I remember Pastor Honey used to tell us, uh, uh, he said, losers let things happen to them, let things happen to them. Winners make things happen. So if we, if we just stop, we're just letting it happen and we're going to lose. But if we make things happen, we continue on with the Lord, he is going to bring us to. So that's why we need to continue on. Okay, so, but so it's tell him, he said, be of good cheer. So look to your neighbor and say, cheer up. <laughs> Come on, give him a big smile too. Come on. There you go. Big smile. Anybody sitting beside someone greasy this morning? <laughs> oh, it's that anointing. Okay, so be of good cheer. Okay, so now even in this, I want to say this real quickly. First it says, be of good cheer. Everybody say cheer. And then he said, next thing he said in the short passage, he said, it is I. And then the third thing he says, 
uh, be not afraid. So first of all, he's going to bring us joy in a situation. Say, how can I have joy in this situation? God is going to restore our joy because the enemy comes in and tries to rob us of our joy. And if he can cause us to uh, rob us of our joy, he can rob us of our joy. This is the first thing he said, so be of good cheer. Because uh, uh, God wants us to ha have the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And so the absence of joy, and that's the whole thing here today, is that there's such a big movement of, of, of depression in the land today. And the definition of, of, uh, of, of depression is, it, the opposite of depression is what? Joy, happiness. So it's the opposite. So if, if there's depression there, it's, there's the absence of joy. There's the absence of happiness. So how many know it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength? It's not our own joy. Because how many know we go through some tough things? And there's no reason to be in, in our natural. There was no reason to be happy in that situation. But it's not our joy. It's the joy of the Lord. It's his joy that comes down upon us and able to carry us through. That's the last thing. That's the verse that my mom ever quoted to me. She looked at me in the eyes and pointed at me. She said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. She pointed around. Whoa. And I, I received that word, so I carry that word with me. It's that joy of the Lord that is my strength. So when we're going through something, when we're going through, uh, uh, sister was sharing about uh, the losses in her life and the losses of our family members that, that have gone on. But how many know we haven't lost them because we know where they're at? When you lose something, you don't know where it's at. But we know where our loved ones are. And so there, there's a joy even in that. So be of good cheer. And he said, it is I. So we really need to realize who he is. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the son of God. He's the one that makes a way when there seems to be no way. He is our fortress. He is our shield. He is our buckler. He is the one that surrounds us. With he says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, I will lift up a standard against him. How many know we serve a God that surrounds us with his glory, surrounds us with his power, and lifts us up when the enemy is flooding us around. He is there to lift us up in Jesus' name. And so he's here. So it is him. So be of good cheer. Why? Because he, it is, because because we serve a God that's alive. And so, and through that, we do not have to be. So we will not be afraid if we realize who he is and receive his joy. Verse 28, it says, and Peter said unto him. Now here's, here's the crazy thing. Peter always opened up his mouth really fast. I mean, he always said things right away. And, and sometimes, how many sometimes, how many know someone that speaks and thinks later? How many, you are that person <laughs> that speaks and thinks later? <laughs> uh, so, but, and sometimes Peter did that in, in his life. So, but here he is. They saw Jesus walking on the water. And Peter answered and said, Lord. Now, now here he is. Peter standing up amongst all the other disciples. Oh, he's going to be the tough guy. He's, he, he's going to be the number one disciple. He's going to stand up and be the brave one. He stands up and he said, Lord, if it's really you, ask me to come out on the water with you. <laughs> he's probably, it's probably not him. I don't know if it's him for sure, but, but yeah, and so, so he's looking around his disciples and all of us, <laughs> and then what happened? And then the Lord said, Come! Did you guys hear something? How many know sometimes when we get called on what we say, we don't want to hear it? And so he said, come. And so there's a, I, I, and there's a period after that before the next sentence. But I believe there's a big gap in that spot when he said, come. Did he really say come? Maybe he said something else. I know he said, be, be a good cheer. Let's just be happy over here on the, on the ship. Come on. No, Peter, he said, come. What? So some now, now, I mean, sometimes we talk, and we've done it ourselves. How many ever talk big, and then when it comes time to do it, oh, we don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, come, hey, whatever you need, I'm your person. Call me if you need something. So we get a phone call. Oh, I'm in the middle of something right now. 
I'm kind of busy right now. Oh, got a flat tire. Almost out of gas. Oh, <laughs> cars broke down. Oh, <laughs> we have all kinds of uh, all kinds of excuses. So you know, but, but that's what's happened. And so here's Peter. He said, "The Lord said, come." And so then the next next verse we say, "And when Peter was come down out of the ship." Okay, so now this is a process. This is a story. He got out of the ship. So we, he had to actually move down from where he was into the water. Now this, this is a, like a historic thing because I don't know if any of the other ones that, that have ever done this, but he went out of the water. What would, what, what would we do? How would we do it? I know how I would do it. Ooh, I'm gonna do it now. This time for sure, guys. I'm going for sure. Ah! Oh. Kind of cold, guys. He said, "Go." You said you'd go. So he, so he said, when he came out and he went into the water. So he had to actually step out. So sometimes it takes a step of faith. If we're going to see something miraculous happen, we've got to take a step of faith. And maybe some of you have taken that step here today just by being here today. Or maybe just by watching this service here today. You are taking a step. God is drawing you by his spirit. And he's calling you, saying, come. And he's drawing you. Something's drawing. So we, now we know, you know, Peter started to obey. So even though... We know Peter's personality and what was about to happen. Yet he did. He took a step of faith and he went down. <laughs> How many of you would take your <laughs> you would take your time? <laughs> hey. I'm doing like he's doing. Check it out, guys. Check it out. And there he was. He was walking on the water. But here, here's what happened. Okay, now, uh, and this, there's an important part of this, service, of this message that we always miss out. It says, but when he saw the boisterous wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Okay, now, first of all, remember, it was a ways out there because they couldn't see. They couldn't distinguish who it was, if it was, who it was, if it was a spirit. So it had been a ways out there. And so Peter went out. Okay, I'm going to have to start back here. Peter got out of the boat, got on the water, and started his journey towards Jesus. Walking, take us, take us, and on that water. Okay, now, here's, here's a story that I, I always missed out on. Okay, now when it said, when the boy, when he began to see the things, and we always we hear about the story about how the waves got high and everything, it's got really noisy and everything, and all of a sudden, Peter started looking at the water, and, and then and when he saw those, he started looking, he took his eyes off the Lord, he started looking at those things, and at, those, at that time, he started to sink. So I want to encourage you to keep your eyes upon Jesus Christ. Don't keep your eyes upon the things of the world that are going on in the world today. Don't focus on those things, because if we focus, that those things will will bring us fear but as we keep our eyes upon Jesus Christ he will give us that strength and he will give us that that power and authority so keep your eyes upon and keep focused on him so Peter went out there and he and he, and he took his eyes off the Lord and he started looking around it's easy to do guys how many know it's easy to start looking at everything that's happening around us it's, it's easy to start looking at what's happening in our families and start to get discouraged and start questioning God, saying, God, are you really here? Do you really know what I'm going through? Are you really here? Come on, Lord. Come on. Why? Why am I going through this? And yet, he is wanting to bring us through, and yet we're staying right there. We're looking and we're focusing on those things instead of keeping our eyes upon him. How many are going to keep your eyes on the Lord? How many are going to keep your eyes on him, focus on him, and keep on walking? Look at your neighbor and say, keep on going. Come on, shake them a little bit and say, keep on going. Ah, oh, come on, there you go. Okay, so now, so he looked at those things and he started to fall. And it doesn't say how far he went down. But he said, Lord, Lord, save me. And so guess what happened? 
it says right here, look at what, look at how it says it. It says, uh, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. So that tells me gee, he almost got to Jesus. He was an arm's length away from Jesus. And right before he got to him, he started looking around. Why when he were that? Because it said he read. So, I mean, I don't think that the story doesn't say that Jesus supernaturally stretched his arm a half a mile and caught him. It just says he reached down. And, and Jesus was, you know, so, so it says he was right there. So what that tells me is that Peter almost made it. But right at the end, he got discouraged and he started to fall. I want to encourage you here today. Don't lose hope in Jesus Christ. Keep holding on because some of you are at the brink of a miracle. There is something you are in arm's reach of a miracle and God doing something mighty in your land, in the family, in your household, and in your life. You're almost there, but you start to look at those things. Keep holding on to Jesus. You're almost there. It's about to happen. You're about to see the power of God move in your life. You're about to see the mighty hand of God begin to move. How many are to see that hand move in your life? How many are ready to see how God's hand begin to move? And there it was. He reached down and immediately he caught him. He said, save me. And Jesus reached down. The word save means to deliver, to bring out. Jesus reached down and touched him. So I want to encourage you here to say, today he says, immediately forth, caught his hand and caught him. So he was still on his way down. Caught him. He was still on his way down. Woo! How many, somebody, maybe you feel like those things are about to overtake you. Sometimes we're in that place and we just say, oh, we, we, I don't know if I can take it anymore. I don't know if I can do this anymore. And the enemy's trying to discourage you and say, you might as well give up. And that's what was happening is that all those things that surrounded Peter was trying to discourage him and stop him. I mean, now let's, 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 let's go to the alternative ending of this story. Peter keeps his eyes on the Lord, walks on the water all the way and takes him by the hand and they both walk back. And, and the, the story goes and history goes that there was a man that actually walked on the water all the way and he was victorious. But the, the, it would have been all turned around. But no, right up before, he said, I believe that God wants to give us that ending. He wants to give us that victorious ending to keep your eyes upon the Lord. And he's the author and what he has begun in your life, he is going to finish. He's going to complete in your life. So he's here to keep on just reach this you're, you're you're at arm's length about receiving that miracle so reach out just reach out your hand right now just say reach out reach out and take it see that's how close we are to the hand of God that's how close we are how many know he's right by our side and he's ready to take us by the hand go ahead and give him a hand of praise he is right here immediately caught him it said and when they were come into the ship the wind ceased <laughs> Woo. so he went out there it was still, wind still blowing, waves crashing. Went out there. Jesus took him by the hand. Now the, now the waves still crashing. The wind still going there. But now they had, had you. And I'm sure, what would you feel like? I know what I'd be saying. Jesus, oh, I, I was that close to drowning. I'm sure glad you took me by the hand. Pulled me up. Here we are. Come on, let's go back in the ship. Come on, come on. And, and you're know, talking all happy and all victorious now. But keep in mind, too that they walked back on the water. Sometimes we focus on the fall of Peter when 90% of the story, he was walking on water. Ooh. I mean, how many, how many would have liked to, to, to have had that experience? Walking out there, and yeah, we might have we might have felt, we might have faltered, but he caught us. The story didn't end with Peter falling and, and, and sinking in the water. The story ended by Jesus taking him by the hand. They turned around and they walked back on the water. How many know he's going to bring us through? How many know Jesus is about to take you by the hand and he's about to lead you back into that place of safety? It says, so the one they were come back into the ship. As soon as they got back, back in, boom, boom. The wind ceased. 
I said, well, why? Why didn't it happen out there? I believe that Jesus wanted to show him the power that it has. In the midst of all that, in the midst of all the storms and everything, he still took him by the hand. He still caught him and led him back and brought him into the ship. You might be going through something right now. It's not the end of the story. It's not going to take you down. It's not going to destroy you. It's not going to discourage you. But Jesus is going to take you by the hand. And when he takes you by the hand, th there is going to be a peace that passes all understanding. It said when they came into the ship, they came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. We can be, when that happens, we begin to realize how powerful he is. We begin to realize how mighty of a God that we serve. You wonder why you're going through what you're going through right now? God wants to show you how powerful he is in that circumstance. He wants you to know how real he is. And in, in a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity to come around this altar. And you know what that is? That's you walking on the water. You might be in the middle of something right now, but God wants you to rise and move forward. And what we do in the natural happens in the supernatural. We can stay in the ship or we can move out. We can step out from where we are and move into his presence. Something is going to happen. Let's all stand in his presence here. This is, this is an important part. You see, when Jesus called him and, and Peter went out, that was just the beginning of the story. But the end of the story was when they came back and they returned. And so here today, when we open this altar, it's an opportunity for you to step out from where you are, the circumstance you're in right now, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, the, 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 the enemy trying to discourage you. It's, it's a time to step out from and come into the presence of the Lord. Let's all move around this altar here today. Step out from where you're at and make your way around this altar because I believe that God is going to do something for you. There it is. There it is. Someone is already getting touched right now. The power as you move forward, God is beginning to move in your life and you're sensing his presence. You're sensing his glory. He's about to reach down and to pick you up. He's about to reach down that mighty hand and touch you and bring you out. You're thinking, I'll never get out of this. I'll never get out of this state of mind. Oh, I'll never. Let us go to the enemy. The devil is a liar and the father of all lies. The Lord is going to reach down his hand and pick you up. And he's here in this place. So get ready. Because as we reach out, in a moment, we're going to lift our hands to the Lord. And when we do, it's just like Peter reached out and took him by the hand. Because we know that God is right by our side. There are some that are here that are really going through some difficult times and storms that are that are trying to tear you down. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, I'm going through something right now. I'm in the middle of something right now. And I need God to begin to do something in my life. Yes, yes, yes. All those things. We recognize that we are standing right in the middle. Something is going on right and we don't know what to do. But guess what? God is about to move upon your life. And he's about to reach down and move upon you and bring you out. Why? Because he wants to show you how great he is. There have been some here that, some thoughts that have been tormenting you around your mind over and over. And that are trying to discourage you and bring you down. You just can't seem to stop thinking about those thoughts. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, that's me. I've been th there's some things that the enemy has been trying to say to my mind and my thoughts. Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and how do we know? Because that's the spirit of God. He knows what you're going through. Let's face it. And some have been felt like giving up. If I, I feel like throwing in a towel, I, I don't, I, sometimes I feel like God isn't with me. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, I felt like giving up. I felt like throwing in a towel and I'll give it. Yes, 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 he's here. And those of you that are watching, I, I, you can lift your hands because I believe God is going to begin to do something for you as we begin to call out to the name of the Lord here today. Amen. So lift your hands all over this place as we begin to. Lift your hands as if you're to receive, as if God is going to reach down his hand. The hand of Jesus is going to reach down and pick you up. Just lift up your hands and receive it. Father, right now we declare, Father, in the middle of our circumstance, in the middle of the storm in our life, in the middle of what's trying to tear us down, Father, Lord, we reach out to you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are here to reach down and to pick us up. Jesus, we know.
know who you are. Lord, help us to rejoice because you are who you say that you are. And you will reach down and pick us up. And I thank you that you're a God that hears us and answers our prayers. Yes, he's here in this place. Say it with me to say today. Say, dear Father in heaven, I reach out to you in the middle of my storm. I reach out my hand. Take me and lead me through and lead me back to safety. And I will rejoice because you are the son of the living God. And you are who you say that you are. And I receive it. I am set free. Help my joy to be full in Jesus' name. Help me to follow you in the midst of the storm to keep my eyes upon you because you will bring me through and I receive it in Jesus name I receive it in Jesus name Father right now we declare Lord just let the begin to thank him all over this place there is going to be a turnaround for somebody things are beginning to change there is going to be a change in your mind and your thoughts God is beginning to reach down upon you he's beginning to touch you things are beginning to shift the direction of your life your destiny is beginning to change right now I want you to know that he is here he's taking you by the hand you are not alone but he wants you to know he is right there yes take him he's touching you right now father lord release your hand your glory across this place lord as we reach out to you that we will touch you that you will take us by the hand and you will bring us to father we thank you we praise you lord that we exalt you we lift you up we don't lift up our circumstance our problems or our needs but father we lift you up because you are greater help us to magnify you Help us to make, to make you greater in our life. For these things are nothing compared to you. And we thank you. We praise you. Lord, we declare these things. Everybody say, I receive it. My life is turning around. I'm returning to the Lord. I'm walking with him into his arms of safety. In Jesus' name. You can join us every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Poplar Assembly of God, two miles west, Highway 2.